So here we are. My name is Andres. Mendel. Okay, so may I ask you some aspects about you and your work? Sure, I have nothing better to do, so it's okay. Okay, first tell me about your life related to your experiments. Well, first of all, I'm a monk named Mendel, Gregor Mendel, living in the 1860s in an Austrian monastery. Monks have a lot of time, so I spend my time crossing pea plants. As I, did, as I did this over and over again, I noticed some patterns in the inheritance of traits from one set of pea plants to the next. Okay, and what do you use pea plants? Okay, I studied the, peep, the garden pea for two main reasons. First, peas were able from seed merchants in a wide array of distinct shapes and colors that could be easily to identify. The second, peas can be self-pollinated or be cross-pollinated. So also I mainly study pea plants because they have distinguished characteristics that they were quick to grow. And how do you use them in order to make your experiments? Uh, I act as a pollinator, carefully controlling which two plants will create a new generation. While working with the tens of thousands of plants, I will observe the seven different traits from these plants, which, which are flower color, can be, could be purple or white, flower position, axial or terminal, stem length, short or tall, seed shapes, round or wrinkled, seed color, yellow or green, pot shape, inflated or constrict, pot color, yellow or green. Okay, can you be more specific, like describing you the tail and uh, work with peas? Okay, in order to perform my experiments, I use seven pea plant traits which are protected from the influence of foraging, pollen, as well as an accidental impregnation that will cause incorrect results. Basically, I avoid them to self-pollinate. Through the selective cross-breeding branding of common pea plants over many generations, I discovered that certain traits show up in offspring without any blending of parental characteristics. While obtaining the offspring, I conclude the term dominant and recessive. For example, in cross-pollinated plants that produce only yellow or green pea seeds, I cross a pure yellow line with a pure line and I observe that the F1, the, that is the first filler generation, yeah, I observe that peas that, that appear were all yellow, therefore yellow is the dominant phenotype and green is the recessive. In the second filler generation, one green pea was presented as the ratio, in this case, 3 to 1. And did this ratio appear in later generations? Yes, and I realized that this regularity was the key to understand the basic mechanism of inheritance. Okay, I got it. Uh, can we now pass to your laws? I know that there are the love of uh, dominance, the love of segregation, and the love of independent assortment. But what do they stand for? Okay, the first law that is the law of dominance, a dominant trait, states that a dominant trait whose appearance will always be seen in offspring. In other words, dominance describes 
age of two parents and phenotype of only one allele is visible in the offspring, the, then that allele is said to be dominant in, in that terms. The second law we have the law of segregation, a parent, a parent may have two distinct alleles for a certain gene. Each one copy of a given chromosome, this law states that this, these two alleles will be separated from each other during meiosis. And the last one, the third law of independent assortment, it states that the traits inherited through one gene will be inherited independently of the traits inherited through another gene because the genes reside, uh, reside on different chromosomes that are independently assorted into daughter cells during meiosis. Can you tell me about bias and the influence of society on you? At those times, it was difficult to determine if I was doing bias or not, but recently studies have accused me of cooked data to make them closer my speculations about the results of F2, of PC, and, but I understand that with recent technology and research, it is demonstrated that there is no evidence of expected trend, so the suggestion of bias is not supported anymore. And the last one, how Punnett squares are applied to your loss? Punnett squares? What? Uh, sorry, uh, this came after your time, sir, sir. But please explain me, what is this? Okay, well, one of the easiest way to calculate the mathematical probability of uh, inheriting a certain trait was invented by an early 20th century English geneticist called Reginald Punnett. His technique employs what we now call a Punnett square. This is a simple graphical way of discovering all of the possible combinations of genotypes that can occur in children, given the genotypes of their parents. It also shows the odds of each of the offspring genotypes occurring. Look, this is a Punnett square. Okay, oh yes, this is an ex clear example of the law of dominance we, because we have the dominant um, genes, the recessive genes, and then in the middle we have the hybrids. Um, for example, if both parents have recessive genes, the baby will have the blue eyes, and if the parents have the dominant genes, will have the, the brown, brown eyes. eyes. Okay. okay, so all is clear. Thank you. Thank you to you. And we have to return to your time? Yes, I, I have to pray. I have to pray for you for the exam. So Okay, thank you. Thank you.